Welcome to Electro Online and our next topic here in the electron structure and atoms is talking about the atomic spectra. Now we're, get, now we're getting a little bit closer to the atom and how electrons and photons and quanta of energy relate to one another. So imagine uh, an atom that has a nucleus and the nucleus is potentially is, is um, the nucleus is positively charged, not potentially, but it's positively charged because it contains protons and neutrons. And around the nuclei we have places where electrons can exist and those are called orbitals or energy levels where electrons can exist. Now we haven't gone to the details and explanation yet why electrons can only exist in certain places, but be assured that electrons can only exist in very specific what we would call energy levels. So we can say that innermost location that electrons can exist is the n equals 1 or the innermost energy level. The next place where electrons can exist is n equals 2 or the second energy level. The next one is the n equals 3 or the third energy level and so forth. So think of it as falling into a potential well. You can think of it maybe in terms like this. Here's the nucleus of the atom and then around it we have places where electrons can exist. This is the n equals 1 level, the n equals 2 level, the n equals 3 level, 3, the n equals 4 level and so forth. So if an electron exists there, it, it's in its lowest energy level than it can be. And for the electron then to go to the next energy level, it needs to acquire enough energy to jump to the next level. This represents a difference in the energy level and unless the electron is given the proper amount of energy, it cannot jump to the next level. Now where would that energy come from? Ah, photons, quanti of energy. If a photon comes along and strikes the electron, and that photon contains the exact amount of energy that represents the difference in energy between level 1 and level 2, the electron will absorb that photon and jump to the next level. If a photon comes along that has a slightly higher frequency and therefore contains more energy and it jumps onto the electron and the electron can absorb it if that energy is exactly the same as the energy difference between maybe the first and the third level or the first and the fourth level. But what if it contains enough energy that puts it right between the second and the third level? The electron would simply ignore it the photon would bounce off, go on its merry way, and the electron would stay exactly where it is. Only if the electron contains the exact amount of energy to go from one level to the other, not a little bit more, not a little bit less, can the electron use it, absorb it, and jump to the next level. Now what happens, for example, when there's an electron over here, and it jumps to the next level down, over there? <coughs> Excuse me, can it do that? It can, but when it does, it will emit an, a photon, it will give off the exact energy difference between these two levels and that photon will then go off and disappear into space and maybe go and hit another electron somewhere in another atom. So the atomic spectra is such that when, when electrons absorb energy and the energy that it can absorb is the exact same as the difference between any two levels, the electron can jump up. If electrons jump back down, they will give off exact same amount of energy that you find between these levels. Now, I drew the levels like that, but in essence, a more accurate picture of the levels would be that there's usually a very big difference between the first level and the second level. There's not so much of a difference between the second level and the third level. There's even less of a difference between the third and the fourth and so forth. You so you can see that the difference between the energy levels is not a constant. It does vary. And the last energy drop is the greatest, typically, from all the energy differences. So that's a better pictorial representation. So now here we have photons, and the energy of each photon is equal to h times the frequency. Remember, Planck's constant times the frequency. Planck's constant h is equal to 6.636 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And of course, the frequency is the frequency of the oscillations of the photon. Now also know that the velocity or the speed of light of a photon is equal to the frequency times the wavelength in such a way that the frequency can be written as c divided by lambda and we can plug that back into this equation so instead of writing the energy contained in a photon as h times f we can say that the energy contained in a photon is equal to h times c over lambda. So if we know the wavelength and we know the speed of light you know, Planck's constant, we can figure out the energy of a single photon using this equation as well. This equation is quite often the most common or the most practical equation to use. 
So later on, we're actually going to look at this in a little bit more detail. I just want to give you a, a quick overview that there's an exact um, correlation between the energy contained within the photons and what electrons can do in the energy levels around the nucleus of an atom. If a photon comes along with enough energy, it, the electron can jump to higher levels. If electrons then jump back to lower levels, they will give off the exact amount of energy equivalent to the difference between any jump. For example, an electron can jump from the fifth level all the way down to the first level. And of course, if this is n equals 4 and this is n equals 5, and this represents the delta energy from 5 to 1, a photon with exactly this amount of energy will be emanated from that electron as it jumps back down to the first level all at once. What happens if an electron jumps from the fifth level to the fourth, to the third, to the second, then to the first? It'll emit a photon here with this amount of energy, emit a photon there with that amount of energy, emit a photon here with that amount of energy, and, hit, and will emit a fourth photon with that amount of energy. So depending upon what the electron does, it will emit energy according to the jumps that it makes. What energy does it need to jump back up? Well, if it goes from n equals 1 to n equals 5, it will need this much energy in the photon. If it goes from n equals 1 to n equals 3, it'll need that much energy and so forth. And that's how photons and electrons interplay when they move around the nucleus of atoms. And that's how it goes.